Hello, my name is Omar El Sawi, and I'm a professor of information systems in the Data Sciences and Operations Department, and also the Stonio Chair in Business Administration, both at the Marshall School of Business. I would like in this Tommy talk to share with you some of my thoughts about sustainability in the corporate and institutional space. For the last 10 years, I've been teaching an MBA class on digital strategies for sustainability that does field projects in international locations. We started out in Dubai, where there was very rapid development in order to learn from that. And for the last three years, we have been doing projects in Denmark to learn from their sophistication in sustainability strategy. The observations that I will share in this talk are based on these 4050 projects and how that has influenced our thinking about sustainability strategy. What I hope to accomplish in this talk is to get us to rethink sustainability strategy going forward. The talk is divided into three parts. First, I would like to examine the scope of sustainability strategy and some of the misperceptions around it. Second, get us to rethink sustainability strategy in an era of digital platform ecosystems. And third, get us to further rethink our sustainability strategy in a world where we have exponential change and a big need for humanistic well-being. All right, so what is sustainability strategy? In its most generic and simplest form, sustainability strategy is really about meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. In the corporate world, strategies for sustainability are still in their infancy and really not well integrated into corporate strategy or into digital business strategy. But we are moving steadily in that direction. 20, 30 years ago, if you went to a company and asked who's in charge of quality here, they would report to a person, the quality manager, and say that's the person who's in charge of quality. If you go to a company now and say who's in charge of quality, they will look at you in a strange way and say, we're all in charge of quality. What are you talking about? Right now, if you go to a company and ask who's in charge of sustainability, you will get the same answer that you got 25 years ago when you asked about quality. They will point to a person. It will be the environmental affairs director, or it will be the corporate social responsibility officer. So really, sustainability strategy is not well integrated into the workings of companies. There are uh, progressive companies, of course, uh, who have moved forward with some aspects of integration, like, for example, integrating sustainability and innovation processes into the same uh, department or area. And uh, there is one global athletic shoe company that has been very successful in doing that and achieving both objectives at the same time. That is the direction that sustainability integration is taking, especially with coupling to innovation. But sustainability strategy has many other facets in addition to the temporal longitudinal dimension of not compromising future generations nor resources. So it comprises many different components. Successful business strategy for sustainability is much broader than just green or environmental and must consider the multiple facets of the business ecosystem in which a company or an organization operates. And these are the social, cultural facets, economic, technological facets, and not just the natural, physical environment. So a successful business strategy for sustainability has to worry about operating profitably while protecting and restoring the different facets of its ecosystem and environment. It has to worry about how actions affect members of society, 
and resonate with cultural values. And all of these dimensions are important. It's not just green or environmental, which tends to be the first thing that comes up when sustainability is mentioned. There are also other cross-sectional ecosystem dimensions. And there are all kinds of stakeholders in the communities and the markets that the op enterprise operates in that we have to worry about as part of sustainability strategy. Sustainability strategy also has a collaborative consumption dimension when idle resources are shared. So think of the sharing economy, the Ubers, the Airbnbs, etc., and how that sharing economy allows the shared use of resources. This is also part of sustainability strategy. So in short, sustainability strategy is really a multifaceted phenomenon that requires our attention across the corporation and its ecosystem and it's also not about compliance. It's about creating new opportunities and new business models. That is the attitude with which we need to address sustainability strategy going forward. When we are able to combine these multiple facets in the context of stakeholders in the ecosystem, we get a much richer view of sustainability strategy which is actually much better suited to the world of digital platforms, knowledge networks, and people connected together. You think of community economics, you think of environmental renewal, but you also think of infrastructure upkeep, of cultural heritage, of social leverage, and of talent development. And you think of that in the midst of a lot of different stakeholders whether these are collaborators or competitors or complementers or civic societies or citizens or customers or crowds. And all of these things come together to give us a more integrated sustainability strategy. Let me move to the second point I would like to make regarding the rethinking sustainability strategy. And that is the critical impact of digital platforms. We all know that there is an increasing number of products and services that are provided through connected digital platforms. But actually the ubiquity and the intensity of that is becoming so high at this point. And it is so high that it may be more useful to think of digital first and physical second. So think of the world as being flipped with digital as the foreground and physical as the background. It doesn't mean physical is not there, but it just provides a better way of thinking that results in innovative business models and also consequently new ways of thinking about sustainability strategy. Let me illustrate what I mean by an example. So if you think of an Uber ride, what do we do? We have an app on our phone. We request a ride to a particular destination. We see different levels of service being offered to us with different prices, different arrival times. We pick one and then it's confirmed. We see a number of cars on the screen coming towards us and one of them picks up our ride. And then we see the car license plate, the name of the driver, the driver rating. Same with the driver at the other end, it sees the consumer rating. And a credit card transaction is enacted on the platform as well. And then there's the ride, finally. But if you think about it, most of the processes happened on the platform and were digital. And that changed the way that the physical processes were managed and consequently the business models that came with that. And you can extrapolate that to the impact on sustainability strategy and what new ways of managing physical processes you can have by having new capabilities on digital platforms. We have seen a number of companies in Scandinavia take this digital first approach to sustainability. So for example, the fast fashion industry has combined circular supply chains with digital and it's made all the difference for them. We have seen wind farms in Denmark where the wind turbines each have 500 sensors or more that continuously gather information 
on wind direction and weather conditions and other such things. And they will adjust the blades for the fleet to maximize the energy generated. We have seen applications with smart cities and traffic lights and other municipal digital activities. And it's really moving in that direction where digital processes can change the business models that are available and how the physical processes are managed to get much better sustainability strategy. In fact, it's becoming increasingly common for companies to create digital twins for their physical assets and products, whether it's a piece of furniture or a wind turbine, and they can then manipulate the digital model or digital twin to rethink and redesign products and processes in new ways around that. Digital platforms also enable the creation of online communities around them. That could be very vital for their success, whether they are customers or partners or suppliers or any other stakeholders around that platform. So for example, I'm familiar with a company in Denmark in the medical device and services space that focuses on intimate healthcare. They have created an online community around their platform with patients, nurses, and doctors for people with chronic diseases that are difficult and uncomfortable to talk about. And they have found that this online community is really important to the success of the company and its ecosystem. And they really would like that online community to, to thrive and that has shaped their whole notion of sustainability how can we keep this online community thriving and again that is a very different digital view of sustainability the third and last point that i would like to uh, mention is the elephant in the room which is exponential change we are all becoming more and more aware of climate change and how it's accelerating and how we really need to do something about it that goes beyond the blah blah. The UN's climate change report this August issued a very bleak code red for humanity on climate change. That is not to say that uh, this have, has just only become apparent now. In 2015, the UN also put up uh, 17 sustainable development goals, and a lot of countries in the world, and we've seen that in Denmark, are taking that very seriously. And people actually know, and they say, okay, we're working on number 3, 10, and 13. People know what these goals are. I think that the COVID pandemic has further accentuated our global dependency and our sense of understanding that we can have all kinds of unpredictable and exponential changes that can spin out of control. And we all have to be very careful into how we manage our planet and our well-being. The COVID pandemic has reminded us how globally interdependent we are and how fragile we are, and how we have to worry about community and the well-being of others more than ever. It shows very vividly that even for corporations and nations, it's not just about well-doing, but very much critically about the well-being of individuals and communities. And with that accentuation, if you look at the change in tone in sustainability strategy, I expect we will see much more emphasis on humanistic aspects of sustainability in the coming years. So in closing, whether you're a business professional or a management scholar, I hope I have twisted your head a little in terms of thinking about sustainability strategy. I hope that you will think well beyond green and appreciate the importance of not having sustainability strategy be separate, but rather be integrated into corporate and organizational strategy. I also hope I have twisted your head a little in the direction of thinking digital first and how important that is and how that will change into how we think of sustainability and how we act around it. And then finally, 
please be aware of the need for humanistic aspects to be accentuated in sustainability strategy going forward. The emphasis on well-being is becoming really vital for all of us. I hope in combination these three points give you a different view of sustainability going forward and it is what I call sustainability 2.0.